What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here today with the review for Bell Collective Season 1 Episode 5 titled No Yams. Huh. No Yams. We're going to talk about that one because I got a lot to say about that buddy. No Yams. No Yams my... Mm. Carlos, Carlos, Carlos. I'm ha I got to give it to you Carlos. You doing a damn thing with Bell Collective and then you got me tomorrow talking about uh, Love and Marriage Huntsville. You got me, Carlos. You got me. But let's talk about it, you guys. All right, you guys. I am going to start up with Antoinette because I got a little bit of an issue with Miss An uh, Miss Antoinette. We're going to talk about Miss Antoinette. So we see Antoinette and she is at her dental practice that, you know, she's getting, you know, that she's building. Congratulations. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give, continue to give kudos to Antoinette for that one. Like I'm not going to tear down my sister by no means, but she has Kaylon coming to meet her. So she wants to make sure that Kaylon is all good after, you know, Letitia's brunch. And we're going to talk about Letitia's brunch in a little bit as well. Um, here's my thing with Antoinette and I tweeted this and Marie liked my tweet. I don't know. And I, Marie liked the tweet that I said, I said, we, we got to, we gonna stop coddling this white woman. Like I have an issue with that. I still have an issue with the, the stuff from last week because Kaylon made that stuff all about her when in actuality, those ladies were not saying, Hey, Kaylon, you did this to me. Your family did this to me. Da, da 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 da. No one said that. So for her to internalize that and then make it all about her, it was a problem for me. And that's kind of what they're doing. You know, if you guys have been watching the impeachment trial, I didn't. I haven't been talking about it. But if you guys have been watching the impeachment trial, you know it's a it's a it's a it's a shit show basically. Well, today was a shit show with you know who's attorneys. And when they got up there, they made everything about the Democrats this. And then they definitely tried to make, you know, tried to paint the Black Lives Matter movement in a negative light. Like they spend the narrative, like they, they want to spin it and make it about them. And that's what this was. Like, I get it. Well, actually, no, I don't get anything when it comes to Kaylon and that situation. I get nothing. I don't understand anything in that situation. I, you know, um, I get Antoinette wanted to make sure her friend was good. But at the same time, Kaylon made herself uncomfortable for no reason. No one, like I said before, no one addressed Kaylon. Kaylon allowed herself to get uncomfortable. Like, that's my whole problem when it comes to Caucasian people sometimes. Not all Caucasian people, but some. When you start talking about race and race relations, they want to, sometimes they want to flip the script and they want to play as if racism doesn't exist anymore. Like, that's what annoys me when they try to play like it doesn't exist. Or, like, it does exist. It still exists in this day and age. It still very much so exists. So I'm not here for us coddling Kalon. We've done it in multiple episodes now because we've had to educate her on certain things. And here's the thing that I want to say to Kalon. If you're going to be in this group of black women, then sit down. If they are having a conversation that you are uncomfortable with, that is a, that is a time for you to get out, you know, get, you know, if, if it's something that's not within your comfort zone, say, okay, you know what? This is something I'm not familiar with. I don't know the struggle, the plight of a black woman or a black man. Educate me. You know, it might be hard for me to hear this, but you know, for me to grow and be a better person, let me hear what you guys have to say. That's all it has to be. Instead of giving us the whole white woman tears, and woe is me stuff, but I'm off of that situation. So Antoinette does give her a tour of the, um, the dental practice, and she's also going to have a yoga studio in there as well. So come on, come on, Antoinette. Do the damn thing. 
but I'm going to hold you account. I'm, I'm still coming at you for that K-Line situation, but I still love you nonetheless. Let's move on. All right, you guys. Next, I want to talk about Letitia. So the episode, now it opened up where the last one left off with the brunch. k eventually left, and at this point, Tisha, you might want to stop doing these brunches because they never go the way that you planned it. <laughs> Or you might want to stop inviting Marie. I'm just putting that out there. I, I have no issues with Marie, but you might want to stop inviting her because the first brunch was definitely all her. Now this this brunch right here, after rewatching last week's, after you know thinking about it last week, I can't place all the blame. I didn't place all the blame on Marie last week. I got to place most of the blame on Kalon. And I'm still going to stick to what I said about Marie. Marie should not have said anything to Kaylon about leaving or anything like that. I feel like that should have been Tisha that said that to Kaylon. But a subscriber did say, you know, if a, a subscriber kind of pointed it out to me that, you know, Tisha wasn't saying anything. So Marie said something. So I'm like, you know what? I can see that point as well. So at this point, she was finally able to tell the ladies about Ferris Street. I was like, thank God we finally got that out. It took us five episodes to get out Ferris Street, but we finally got it out nonetheless. We finally got Ferris Street out of her mouth nonetheless at the brunch. So she asked the ladies to be there with her. I don't know if they agree or not, but she asked them. So then we see um, Tisha's husband, Glenn is his name. So we all know Glenn, he is a, is he a towboater, tugboat, tugboat, towboat, towboat, something like that. You know, he's gone for 28 days and then he comes home for 14 days. I got a lot, yeah, like I said before, I have a lot to say about him. So Tisha is informing him about, you know, Ferris Street and she tells him that there's gonna have to be a change in the house that she can't cater to him. I'm like, oh God, this is giving me Martell and Marceau vibes so thick and strong. More so Marceau. Actually, nope, it's giving me both. Actually, he's giving me both Marceau and Martell vibes. He's giving me Marceau vibes with the whole role situation. And he's giving me Martell vibes because I feel like he's gonna he, he's he's a serial cheater. So that's why he's giving me both Martell and Marceau. Um, now here's the thing with Tisha, because I was looking at that room she was in, and I'm like, why does she have all these sticky notes around here? Like, is she trying not to be the next Mary Jane Paul on um, Being Mary Jane? Because I mean, she just had sticky notes everywhere. Sticky notes here, sticky notes there, sticky notes there, 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 everywhere a sticky note. So you know, she's trying to do some business, and you know, she um, now this was really rude. So while she's doing business, we see Glenn. Glenn is in the kitchen trying to find him some food. And then he comes upstairs. He's standing in the door while she's on the phone. I'm like, dude, that's rude, number one. So then he goes and turns on the vacuum cleaner. If I was her, I would have I told that lady, you know what, ma'am? I'm going to have to call you back. She'd probably be like, okay. I'd hang up that phone and I'd just go, whop. Hit him with the phone like, dude, I'm on the phone. Why would you turn on the vacuum cleaner? That's rude. As, that's rude and disrespectful to turn the vacuum cleaner on in front of me and I'm doing business. No respect. Like, no respect at all. So, yeah, like I said, like he gives me Marceau Mar vibes. With this whole role situation, talking about he don't want to put an apron on. Now, when she said that there was bologna and hot dogs and stuff in the refrigerator, I was just like, ugh. Ugh. You ain't got no, well, I don't eat pork chops. I'd be like, you ain't got no ground beef, no chicken, no steaks, pork chops. Again, like I said, I don't eat pork chops. You ain't got no meats, no actual meat, not lunch meat, but some meat. And then he's talking about he don't want to put on the apron. I'm like, bruh, if you want to eat, you better get in that kitchen and get to be in a Betty Crocker and cook some for yourself. 
like I don't now I don't under, understand these whole male female roles in a relationship. Let me know in the comment section if you lady if to the ladies that watch my reviews. Let me know if you guys ladies believe in those roles that the man is supposed to go out and you know make the money while the woman stays at home. She cooks, she cleans, and she takes care of the kids. Let me know how many of my ladies believe in that. Now, me personally, I don't believe in those stereotypical roles in a relationship. It's 50-50, so each person holds their own. Like, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that at all. And then he had the audacity to ask her for a contract. I was like, ooh, a contract. You got your nerve. Yeah, I would have been upside his head. Again. I would have been like, I would have been upside his head again when he asked for the contract. Like, dude, you try me and my patience. You're trying it. You're trying it. What'd you say? Didn't think so. Let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. Then let's talk about Latrice last. So we see Latrice and she's meeting up with Mel. So, you know, she and Mel are talking about this new product that she wants to do. She's talking about, you know, she wants to get it into retail stores. Now, I'm kind of, I'm not confused. I don't know what's in the, pro I don't know what the products are. I don't know if it's, I don't, I know it's hair care stuff, but I don't know if it's like shampoos, condition. I guess it's like shampoo, conditioner, edge control. I guess stuff like that. Stuff to maintain your hair. I would assume like, so I'm, I'm going to assume. But Mel tells her that, you know, it, it will not, it's not going to be easy. And then who pops up like a badass hemorrhoid? Cliff. Cliff is just like that hemorrhoid that you think is gone, but when you when you start walking and you feel it, like damn, it's still there. Mm. So when Cliff popped up, he asked um, Latrice that she talked to her brother. She says no. She's been texting him and calling him, but he hasn't responded to her. So then Cliff tells her that you know um, the reason that he's not talking to her is because of the way they she they treat her. You know she treats his girlfriend who he thinks that the brother has married. She's like, nah, he ain't married her because if he would, if he, if he was to marry her, I would know that. I'm like, would you now? Would you? So we get a little bit of backstory about her family. Um, I think she said she has two brothers that were killed and the one brother, one of her brothers went to jail because he killed somebody for threatening the family. So yeah, I'm not making that one joke about him in this review because Mississippi is not that far away from Texas. So we're gonna keep it clean in this review. These are jokes. Everything I say in this video, jokes. Jokes, don't come for me. Don't come for me, they're jokes. So then we later see, now here's what, where I was lost at. So I get it that, you know, she does something every year for her brothers, but um, we are in the middle of a pandemic. Why was all your family there? Cause it didn't look like not, no, nobody was social distancing. Yeah, not for me. So they're planting trees for the brother. Their names were Goat and Chip. I'm going to hope that those were nicknames. I'm gonna hope those were nicknames. Well, Chip, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hope that those were nicknames. Again, they're jokes, you guys. So one of the brothers speak, but the brother Derek that she's talking about, he didn't speak, he actually walked away. So Latrice actually following behind him and they have a conversation. And you know, she tells him about what Cliff told her. And then we find out a little bit more about him. So the reason why he doesn't come around them is because he has, has a new girlfriend by the name of I forgot her name. Belinda. Is Belinda old? I, now that's, oop. Mm. Mr. Derek, I'm just joking here. But is she old? Because I mean, Belinda? That is an old ass name. Belinda. Now I'm not being shady. If anybody who, who watches my video and is subscribed to my channel, if your name is Belinda, I'm not, I'm not talking about your name. It's just, you don't see too many Belindas, especially a young woman named Belinda. 
because that is a really old-fashioned name Belinda again they're jokes just jokes so Latrice is saying she doesn't like Belinda and that they like his ex-girlfriend Pam who has a child with him and then she said that the Pam lived and the child lived with her mama so does Pam again it's okay it's a pandemic it's a pandemic so she might not have a job okay so I'm gonna give Pam that one but he is he he's like why is Pam even staying there she's like what do you want us to do put on the street again pandemic but she doesn't have a job that was what I was saying but she doesn't have a job okay I'm, 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 I'm gonna leave Pam and Belinda alone but you guys that was the episode re episode it, it was okay it was a good one I know tomorrow's episode of Love, Love and Marriage Huntsville, that's going to be it. You know what I'm noticing? My Love and Marriage Huntsville reviews are the longer ones that I do. But um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, like this video, leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button so you guys are aware when I drop anything else. Share this video on your social media. Um, what else do I want you guys to do? Get down in the description bar and go check out my planner channel. Also... Stay safe out there, you guys. Um, depending on where you are, if you're in Florida, I envy you. Because it's hot. You guys got nice weather. Whereas the rest of the world is stuck in the cold. Florida. I didn't freeze. I'm just, man, I'm just side on y'all. But yeah, you guys, stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Remember, wash your hands, wear your mask, socially distance, and we will get through this together. I will see you guys tomorrow for Love and Marriage Huntsville. Bye, guys.